We're now going to have a look at test doubles in detail using PHP Unit. So test doubles provide a way for you to test parts of your code in isolation without triggering other parts of your code or without having to depend on other parts of your code because your dependencies are replaced with doubles. In PHP Unit we'll look at two different types of test doubles and they are stubs and mocks. You can think of a stub as a replacement, a fake. So you can stub methods, you can stub method return values, and you can stub objects. A mock is actually a type of stub, except with some additional behavior. For example, you can mimic some of the behavior of the doubled object, or you can actually check that your code is interacting with a mock in the way that you would expect it to. In order to demonstrate stubs and mocks, I've created a very simple uh, test doubles demo project. And so inside of here, I just have a source folder and there are two classes in there. One is a command class, so I've called that example command, and the other one is called example service. As you can see, both very simple things because I want to keep the code very simple uh, because the main thing that I'm demonstrating is how to use mocks, how to create mocks, and how to use them to mimic the behavior of objects, etc., and how to replace methods and objects. So this is the project. All we need to do now is actually go and pull in PHP unit and I'll also pull in a var dumper just in case I need that uh, to dump some values out to show you. So composer require and we'll go with PHP unit forward slash PHP unit and we'll actually add a dev flag even though it's only a small project and this isn't really uh, going to be pushed to GitHub or anything like that. So composer require dev PHP unit and then we'll have symphony var dumper so symphony var dumper just in case i want to do any debugging okay so that's that installed great stuff now i'll actually go and set up some auto loading here is my composer json file i'm just going to add another little key here and that will be for auto loading and we'll say psr4 and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to map my app namespace to a folder called source src. Okay, let's just go and check that. So here you can see uh, my src folder and if you look inside at the actual classes, uh, the namespace is app. Let's look at example service, same again, namespace is app. So I'm mapping that app namespace to this folder here. So we'll go back to composer JSON just so you can see that fully. So auto load, PSR4, and then I map the app namespace to src. Once you've done that, we're not done yet, we need to compose it, dump auto load, and then that will um, complete all our auto loading configuration for us. So compose it, dump auto load, and then if you do hyphen and then O, it'll optimize the files also. Okay, great stuff. So now we are good to go. I'm going to create a folder called tests inside of the project root. So uh, tests. And then I'm just going to create a test file and we'll just call it test doubles test. So test doubles test. And I've actually spelled that wrong. I'll just go up and correct this. Okay, that's better. Test doubles test. This needs to extend test case from PHP unit framework test case. So it extends and that's the one there. So PHP unit framework test case. Let's write our first test. So public function, I'm just going to call it test mock. And first we're going to keep this simple and we're just going to have a look at the difference between stubs and mocks. And you'll soon see that there's very little difference as far as PHP unit is concerned anyway. Let's go and check our code and see how it works. So if I go and look at example command, you'll see here that I'm injecting example service through the constructor. And then when I call or when I invoke the execute method, what it's doing is it actually triggers or it calls the do something method on the example service and returns the value from that. So what I want to do here is I actually, I want to stub or mock this example service. I don't want to uh, use the real one because if we actually go and look at the real one, it doesn't do anything anyway. So let's go and have a go at doing that first and then we'll talk through the differences between stubs and mocks as we walk through this. 
There are a couple of methods on test case for creating stubs on creating mocks. Let's have a look at what they are now. So stub equals, and you say this, and then create stub, and then you need to pass in the original class name as a string. So what we're going to do is we're going to stub example service. Okay, so app example service class. If we actually go and have a look at the create stub method, you can see that beside, behind the scenes, it actually calls another method, create mock object. If you look just below this, we have a method called create mock, and that also calls the same method, create mock object. So what's going on here? Let's go and have a look at that. And as you can see, the return type for this is mock object. And this is how it builds up a mock for us. But the thing to notice here is that regardless of in PHP unit, PHP unit whether you call create stub or create mock, you're going to get the same thing back. You're going to get a mock object. So we're going to get the same thing back regardless of whether we use create stub or create mock. But seeing as we are getting a mock object back, I think it just makes more sense to use create mock. So we'll change that to this. And then from now on, we'll just use this going forward. Let's have a look at how we can now make this work for us. So if we go to our example command, we want to mock the example service. We're going to inject that into our example command. And then when we actually call the do something, we want to actually uh, provide a fake return value. Let's go and do that now. So what we're going to do is this mock. And we're going to say method. And the method is do something. And then we say, we can basically tell it what we want it to return. So we'll just say, we'll return, and we'll just say the string foo. We can now create an example command and pass our mock through the constructor instead of an actual uh, example service instantiation. So example command equals new example command and where it's uh, prompting me for an example service, I can now pass my mock. Okay, and then PHP will be happy with that. It will use the mock instead of the example service. And so I can just do an assertion here. I can just say this, assert same, and I'm expecting foo, because if we look at our example command, it is returning when I call execute, it is returning the return value of do something, which we have said to our mock, we want you to return the string foo. Okay, so we'll go back to this, so same, and when we say example command execute, here we can just say anything. So here we'll just say bar, and then we can actually go and run this. And so run this again, and we get one test, one assertion. So what we've looked at there is really what you would refer to as stubbing. We've replaced the example service, even though we called it a mock. A mock is a type of stub. And we've said that when you call the do something method, then re return us this faked value here. We've just said return the value foo. Now, like I said at the beginning, with mocks, you can actually make it do a little bit more for you. You can make sure that it's interacting with your code the way that you would want it to do. So if we look at our example command, when we call the execute method, we are actually expecting the do something method to be called once. And so that's something you can check for in your test. Let's go and do that now. So here, instead of saying mock method, first off we'll say mock expects. And then this is where you say how many times you expect the do something method to be called. In our case, it's once. So you can say this once. And so we can go and run our test again. I'm just going to add colors to make it a little easier for us to read. And notice how many assertions we see this time. OK, so this time we have one test, two assertions, because when we actually checked that it was being called the correct number of times, that performed another assertion. And so you can change this. For example, if I wanted to check if it was being called two times, I could say this exactly two, and we'll notice that this time our test will fail because it's not being called two times, it's being called once. And so here it tells you expectation failed for method do something when invoked two times. Method was expected to be called two times. 
actually called one times. And so this is a particular type of assertion called an expectation. Let's change it back so that it's now working once again. So we're expecting this to be called once. And there are other things that you can check. You can check that it's been called with the correct arguments. So we'll just drop down another line here and we shall say with. And the with method lets you specify that the correct arguments are being passed. So whatever gets passed in to the execute method, that argument there also gets passed to the do something method. So we can actually check that the do something uh, method is receiving the correct argument. So that should be receiving the string bar. So we can go and add that here and then run our tests again. And so this time we get one test to assertion. So we won't get a separate assertion for the with and the expects. It all comes as part of the same thing. So even if you do add a with here, you're only going to still see the same uh, expectation assertion. If we actually change this and we put something like uh, just an incorrect string, if we go and run it again, you'll see that we get a failure because it's not calling it with the correct argument parameter zero for invocation uh, do something bar does not match expected value failed asserting that two strings are equal let's now have a look at what the methods on our mocks return when we don't actually tell them to return anything by default when we use create mock or create stub to create as a stub or a mock then what happens is that all of the methods on that mock to that stubbed object um, become stubbed themselves and so the internal body of the method isn't actually hit and it by default they just return null unless we unless we tell the mock to return us something like we did here where we said return us the string foo so let me demonstrate that to you and you should understand better what I mean so what I'm going to do with uh, the example service the do something method here we're just going to return some random text and this is really just to demonstrate to you that the internal body of this method won't actually be um, triggered, it won't be hit. So we'll go and create a little test method to demonstrate this. And so I've just called this test return types. Let's actually go and borrow a little bit of code. What I'll do is I'll borrow all of it and then we'll just edit out the parts that we don't actually need. So I'll paste that in there. So I know I don't like cutting and pasting when I'm uh, doing uh, demonstrations, but it's just to save time really, because you don't want to see me typing out uh, a lot of the stuff that I've already done. So we're not actually even going to use that part. We're just going to create the mock. And then what I'm going to do is here, I'm just going to say uh, assert null. And so this assert null and then what I'll do is I'll call the do something method on the mock. And we'll just say bar again. Okay, and the reason I'm doing this is because by default, what will happen is the do something method will return null unless I'm telling it to return something. So let's go and run this. Fender bin PHP unit tests test doubles test and I'm just filtering for that one uh, test that we just created so that will be filter for test return types and we get one test one assertion let's use colors it'll just make it a little bit easier okay one test one assertion so by default when I create a mock of the example service whenever I call any of its methods off of the mock then by default it will return null the only scenarios where it won't return null, where it will return something else, are the ones that we've looked at where we've said, please return this. Or if I actually go and type hint the return, so if I was to say, return a string, then now when I actually go and run this, failed asserting that empty string is null. So basically, if I say return me a string, what it will do is return an empty string. If I was to say return an array, what it will do in this scenario is 
it will actually try and return an empty array. So failed asserting that array is null. How about if I return a standard class or something like that? Let's have a look at this. Okay, so failed asserting that a mock of standard class, so important thing to note there, it's actually tried to create a mock of a standard class. Uh, so failed asserting that mock standard class object is null because I'm still asserting that what I'm getting back is null. And so just for completeness, we'll also look at integers. So int, let's go and run this again. Okay, failed asserting that zero is null. So when you actually type int integer, it will actually default to um, the integer zero. Let's try bool and then that should complete most of the ones that you'll ever use. Okay, and so failed asserting that false is null. So notice the pattern there. It's all things which could actually default to false. So empty strings, zero, uh, empty arrays, that kind of thing. Okay, so let's go and set this back now, and then we should get a passing test because this should now evaluate to null. So if I run the test, okay, that passes. How about if I run all of the tests in the file? Okay, we have a failure in our first test, failure asserting that ZZZ equals bar. So we'll go and change that back. Okay, because that's what it's expecting to be called with. Run this again. And so all of our tests are passing. Now let's have a look at how you can test a consecutive returns. So say for example, you're working in a loop and the do something method is being called on consecutive times. Let's see how we can actually um, mock different returns on each consecutive pass. So I'll write another new test and we'll call this test consecutive returns. That sounds like a good name. Okay, so I'll grab this here, we'll copy our uh, creation of the mock, and then we'll say mock method. And so we're looking at the do something method again, because uh, our example service only actually has one method at the moment. And so there's a couple of ways you can do these things. You can say, will return on consecutive calls. And so with this, you just say, uh, on the first call, I want you to return the number one, and on the second call, I want you to return number two. And just consecutively, as it goes through, then you can say, this is what I expect you to return. So that's one way of actually setting up the method. Another way is to do it like this. You can say, will, and then we have these methods here. And we just say, on consecutive calls. So that is basically doing the same as what we did when we used the method that said will on consecutive calls. And so we'll do the same thing here. We'll just say on the first call, return one. On the second time that the do something method uh, is called, just return the number two. And then how shall we test this? Okay, so we'll do a for each loop and we'll create an array. One, two, as value and then we'll just do an assertion in a loop so we'll say this assert equals in fact we'll say assert same the reason why I say assert same is because what could one also equal it can also be the same uh, have the same meaning as true so if you find yourself in those kind of situations I know I've said this before but if you find yourself in those kind of situations where uh, you're looking at assert equals and it could evaluate to something else, it could mean something else, then I'd use assert same to get that little layer of strictness. And so this assert same, and we're going to say a value, and then all we need to do is say mock do something, and we'll again pass it uh, just B-A-R. So that's meaningless, don't attach any meaning to that, it's just, I'm just passing it anything just to satisfy uh, the fact that it is expecting an argument and so what will happen here is it will loop through on the first loop value will be one and so that should pass because we're saying that on the first uh, on the first call the value will be one on the second call set the return value to two and so we're testing that we are getting two on the second call hopefully that makes sense let's actually go and run this now
So I've ended up in PHP unit tests, test double test, and we're filtering for test consecutive returns. Let's go and run this. Okay, I keep running it without the colours, makes it much easier if we've got the colours. One test, two assertions. Let's actually go and change the consecutive calls to two and then one. And hopefully this should fail because we're looping through in that order there, one and then two. So I'll run this again and our sanity check passes because it does actually now fail. So let's return this back the way it was and then we'll run all of our tests in the file. Okay, so everything's passing, let's move on to something else. You'll have scenarios where you want to actually test that your code is handling exceptions correctly. And so let's have a look at how we can do that now. So we'll say public function. So test exceptions thrown. We'll grab our mock. And so the way that you do this is, uh, again, starts off the same as how we've always done. So method. So it's the do something method. And what we want to do is actually check that, or we actually want to say, uh, throw an exception. So when the do something method is called, throws an exception. So we can say, will this throw exception? But what we'll do here, just to switch things up, is we'll use the actual uh, will throw exception method. And so what you need to do here is actually um, create or new up the actual exception that you want to uh, throw so we'll say new and we'll go with a runtime exception for this one uh, I'll not pass a message. We'll just leave that blank for now And so how will I do a quick assertion for this? What I'll do is I'll say this expect exception Runtime exception and so all I need to do to actually um, Trigger this expectation is just say mock do something and we'll pass BAR again. Okay, so let's go and test this out. So what I've done there is I've created the mock and then I've said when the do something method is called, what I'd like my mock to do is throw an exception and that exception being a runtime exception. And so if you think about how, um, when we actually uh, test that the correct, ex the correct exceptions are being thrown. We can use this here, expect exception. So what we're saying is we expect a runtime exception to be thrown when this code here is triggered. Okay, one test, one assertion. If I didn't say uh, we'll throw exception, so if we actually just remove that line and we go and run it, then we don't get that at all because what is actually happening here is when we say mock do something what it does is it's actually returning null because an exception hasn't been thrown let's put it back to the way it was and we'll run it again because i don't like to end these sections on a red so that's how you actually tell your mocks to throw exceptions let's have a look at something else so what we've looked at so far has been quite simplistic. Here we said uh, when the do something method is called, just throw a new runtime exception. On this one here, we said on the first time that it's called, return the number one. On the second time it's called, return the number two. And this one here, we just said, um, just return the string foo. So all fairly simplistic, scalar types, that kind of thing, and exceptions. What if you wanted a bit more complexity? Let me show you how you can actually uh, create that as well for your mocks. So we'll say public function and we'll say test test callback returns And so here you can set up a callback function with a bit of logic in there Which says uh, in these scenarios I want you to return this or in this scenario I'd like you to return this other value or in this scenario I'd like you to throw an exception just so it can handle different kinds of scenarios with the same mock so I'll demonstrate this by saying uh, if the number is an even number, then just return. Or if the argument is an even number, then just return that even number. If not, throw an exception. So there's going to be two different logic paths here. Okay, so we'll say mock. And so exactly the same initial setup as always. It's the do something method, which we are... Uh, mocking and then what I'm going to do is say will return callback and here is where we set up a callback function 
Okay, and the argument that we pass to this callback function, or the arguments that we pa pass to this callback function, are the actual arguments which would be passed to the do something method itself. So this part here. So again, I'll say arg, and then this is where we'll put our logic. And like I say, I'm going to check to see if the number is even. The way to check if a number is even is we can use modulo. So arg modulo 2 equals 0. Then what I would like uh, my mock to do or my mock do something method to do in that instance is just return arg. What I'd like it to do if it gets past that point is throw an invalid argument exception. And so here we'll check both logic paths by saying assert same and we'll say 10 so mock do something and we'll pass in 10 as the argument. So what we're saying here is if arg modulo 2 equals 0 i.e. if you divide 10 by 2 and there is no remainder um, then return arg so that's what's going to happen there and so 10 will be the same as what gets passed in. Then we need to actually check the other um, path. And so I'm going to say this, expect exception, and it's going to be an invalid argument exception. And all I need to do there is actually call do something with an odd number or something which isn't an even number. Let's actually go and check that this is working correctly. Okay, one test, two assertion. So I'll slowly walk through that just in case. There we create the mock as usual, except instead of uh, saying when do something is called, then I'd like you to return this and giving it like a hard coded value. We've actually put a bit of logic in there. So I've said if the argument which is passed to the do something method is exactly divisible by two, then just return the argument. So in our case, we passed 10. And that's what got what got returned. Otherwise, if the argument isn't exactly divisible by two, I'd like you to throw an a invalid argument exception. And so that's what we checked for there. And we passed the number nine, which obviously is an odd number. So we expect the invalid argument exception to be thrown. Now that we've had a look at how we can manipulate the return value of our mocked methods, or we can throw exceptions from our mocked methods, Let's now go back and revisit what we did with the uh, arguments. So if you remember this bit here, when we said we expect that the do something method to be called with the argument bar, the string bar, let's actually build on that now. And we're going to look at some of the ways in which we can check that the correct number of arguments are being passed, the correct types of arguments and all those types of things. So we're going to start off fairly simple and then we'll build on that in the same way as what we've just been doing with the return values. So I'll create a new uh, test function, public function, and we'll say test with equal to. So what this is going to test is that the value uh, which has been passed as an argument is the exact value that you, that you expect to be passed as an argument. So very similar to the way that we first did this. I'm going to say mock expects and we'll just say this once meaning that we're expecting the method to be called once and our method is do something and so here we're going to actually check that the correct argument is being passed so we'll say with and then this equal to and so again we'll use bar just for continuity and I'm not going to even say what I'm expecting the return to be I'm not that bothered with that at the moment what I am concerned with is making sure that the do something method gets called once and that it is being called with the one argument and that argument being the string bar so let's actually do that now do something bar okay and then let's go and run this so I'm filtering for test with equal to because that's what I call this test method. And again, we'll add colors. Okay, one test, one assertion. No, so that's telling us that it has been called once and it was called with 
the string bar as a single argument. So just to make sure that this is working correctly, I'm going to change this to two. So that's saying that the method has been called twice, which as you can see, we're only calling it once. So I'm expecting this to fail. Okay, and that does fail. Method was expected to be called two times, actually called one time. We'll put this back to how it was and we'll change bar to ZZZ like we did before. And again, we should see this fail expected uh, ZZZ, but we actually got bar. Okay, so let's change that back and move on and do another one. Let's actually try out multiple arguments. So if your method is expecting multiple arguments, uh, we'll have a look at how we can handle that also. So test, test multiple args. I'll make a little bit of space down here and I'll also go and grab this again. Okay, so I'll drop that in there and what I'll do is I'll start off with this but again, I'm going to edit it to make this work, make a little bit of space for myself here. And so uh, again, I'm expecting it to be called once. I'm calling the method do something. And so with this time, I'm going to need more than one argument. So the first one, I'll show you some of the little different things that you can use here. What I'll say is that uh, string contains. So basically we're saying that the string must contain these certain characters in this order. So we're going to say, foo. Next I think we'll have a numerical value so I'm going to check this with uh, greater than or equal so I'm going to say it must be greater than or equal to 100 and then for the third argument I think we'll just say it can be anything and so now I just need to go and actually call the do something method on the mock and I'm going to pass it first the string foo bar and then, then as a second argument must be greater than or equal to 100, so we'll say 1 or 1. And then as the third argument, what I'm going to say is null, N-U-L-L. -L. And so you'll see that PHP Storm is complaining at me here. It says method call is provided three parameters, but method signature uses one parameter. Let's go and look, have a look at example service. And so as you can see, we're expecting one argument. However, this will actually work. You can totally override that. I wouldn't recommend it because if your actual code is saying you're only expecting one argument, why would you actually, in your mock, provide three arguments? However, it is something which is possible. And maybe if you're taking a test-driven approach, you might be trying out, okay, I'm going to try it with these two arguments. Or you might just be figuring stuff out and not actually know how many arguments your method is going to take but with the test-driven approach, you actually write your tests before you actually write the code. So you might write your tests like this and then go and actually uh, physically add the extra arguments to your code. But we're going to have a look at the test-driven development um, method later in the course. So when we get to that, we might try doing something like this. Okay, I'm just going to actually disable the inspection there so that PHP Storm stops complaining. And let's actually go and test this out. So I'm now filtering for test multiple args. Again, I'm going to add close. Let's run this. Okay, one test, one assertion. How about if I actually removed an argument here? And so we just have foobar and 101. Whereas actually we're, we're still expecting a third argument, even though this anything means it can be literally anything, including null in that. Okay, let's run this again. And so now it's complaining. Parameter count for invocation, app example service do something, foobar 101 is too low because we're expecting that third one. So let's go and put that back in. Okay, and we'll move on to something else. When we looked at return values and we wanted to do something a little bit more complex with the return value, we used a callback. And you can do the same thing uh, with the with method in order to create something a little bit more complex. So let's have a go at that now. We shall call this test callback arguments. Uh, so again, I'm going to go and create my mock. And this time what we'll do is we'll actually uh, pass an object as the argument and we'll check that the correct uh, type of object is being passed and also that that object behaves the way that it does do. In order to do this, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go and create another class and I'm just going to call it example dependency. So in the source folder, src, let's create a PHP class example dependency and we're just going to give this a single method, I think. So we'll call it example method and this will return a string. Uh, 
Okay, and we're just going to say you're returning example string. Let's go and use this in our test. And so the way this works is we start off the same way. We're going to say we're expecting it to be called once. But this time I'm going to say I'm going to expect to be called with an object, which would be my example dependency as the argument. So method, do something, and then with, and then I say this callback and so function and then it's going to take an object this time and so the way to confirm that our code is working the way we expect we need to be returning true from the callback so initially I'm just going to hard code true and then we should see a passing test here so I'll say mock do something and I'm going to create a new example dependency but at the moment we're not actually testing or checking anything because I'm just returning true by default let's go and run this and we should get a passing test one test one assertion however if I change this to false then it would actually fail because it's whatever is returned from this callback decides whether this has passed or failed. So we need to do something a little bit more meaningful. So what we can do here is I can actually say object. So I can actually call that method and say that the return value is going to be example string, which should evaluate to true. And then it means that our code is working correctly and this will pass. Let's go and run this again. Okay, one test, one assertion. So that's all pretty cool, but prior to actually returning the result of this callback, which we can actually go and put some other stuff in here which might help us. For example, I could check that we are actually passing the correct instance type. So this assert instance of, we're expecting an example dependency. And if we say we're expecting the object to be an instance of example dependency, if we go and actually run this now, so we get one test two assertions because we've actually performed another assertion here. If I go and change this to a different class, for example, if we said we're going to use example command, then this should now fail. So let's run this again. And so this time we get one failure. OK, so I'll change it back so that it's actually passing. Run it again. OK, that's all working well. Let's have a look at one more. Now we're here, we've said we expect this to be an instance of example dependency. What if we had a concrete, what if we had an instantiation of our example dependency and we wanted to check that we were getting that exact one? Well, there's a way that we can do that using uh, an identical to method. So I'll call this one test identical to. And again, we're going to need our mock. So mock equals this create mock. So same again, mock expects this once. And again, it's going to be the method do something. And so when I say with this time, I'm going to use this identical to. So what I'm going to actually need to do before I actually hit this part of the test is actually create a concrete instantiation of the uh, example dependency. So dependency equals new example dependency and then we'll use that here and so all I need to do now is call the do something method on the mock but what I'm going to do first is actually just going to do what I did in the previous test where I created a new example dependency and so this will actually fail even though it is an instance of example dependency it's not identical to the exact instantiation. So let's go and actually run this test. Filter test identical to, then we'll add the colors. Okay, and so this has failed. What is our failure message? Parameter zero for invocation, example service do something object does not match expected value. Let's go and change this now. And so this time we'll actually call do something with our dependency object, run it again. And so this time it passes. So that's quite a simple one there. And it is one that I have actually used quite frequently. 
Let's go on now to actually creating more custom mocks because what we're doing here is we're using the inbuilt PHP unit methods. If we actually look at what they do again behind the scenes, they call this create mock object. Let's have a look at that. And this is how you actually create a mock or create your stub. Using these built-in methods here, you can actually go ahead and create your own custom mock. So that's what we're going to have a look at now. Let's start by creating a test and then we'll look at the mock builder in more detail. So just below here, I'm going to create a test called test mock builder. Okay, and then I'm going to go back to the test case file. So uh, this method here where we saw create mock object, it's actually in the framework test case uh, file. Let's just go and grab this and then we'll go and paste it into our test and we'll just look at it in a bit more detail. So what you see here is actually a best practice default. So disable original constructor, disable the original clone method, disable argument cloning. These are all considered best practice defaults because the whole point of uh, mocking or stubbing objects is to make life simple. And so by disabling the original constructor, so you're not having to build up big objects and stuff like that, it does make life more simple. However, we're going to have a look at these things in more detail and see how they actually work. So I'm just going to actually remove some of these defaults, which means that if I have a constructor, I'm going to have to make sure that I set it up correctly in my test. So let's go and just say mock equals this get mock builder and then the get mock method if we actually look at this that's what actually generates our mock object now it's our example service that we want to mock so we'll say uh, get mock builder for example service class and then I'm going to actually go and create a constructor in the example service so that we can demonstrate this and we'll just give it a couple of parameters and we'll call them pram1 and param2 and then we'll initialize these okay so now we have a constructor with two parameters if i go back to my test doubles test you can see that it's complained at me what's it saying it's saying needs constructor to be disabled or supplied with arguments. So if you do have a constructor and you've not disabled the original constructor and that constructor has arguments, then you need to actually set those arguments. And you can do that with a method called set constructor args. This takes an array and for each item in the array is uh, one of the params for the constructor. So what I'll do here is I'll just say 100 and 200. And so now I've built a mock Except I've done it myself using the mock builder and the fluent interface to add the methods that I want, remove the ones that I don't want. And so now I can just go and use this the same as uh, the mocks that we created by using the helper methods. Create mock and create stub are basically just helpers to do all the uh, hard lifting for you and give you a nice default to start with. And so because I've got the same thing, I can use it in the same way. I'm just going to do something simple here. Uh, we'll just say the method do something will return foo and then just a quick simple assertion mock do something with a string bar let's go and grab the name of this method so i'm filtering for test mock builder i'm adding the colors one test one assertion so we're happy with that now we know how we can use the mock builder to start building our own customized mocks so let's move on to something else which you can do with the mock builder one of the things which enables you to do is to mock only selected methods so that the rest of your uh, object just behaves the same way. Let me show you what I mean by that and we'll write a test called test only methods. So we might as well build this from scratch just to have a little bit of practice so that we're not always copying and pasting. So this get mock builder example service class. This time I am going to disable the original constructor so Disable original constructor and then I'm going to use a method called only methods only methods takes an array and these are just the methods on that class which you wish to stub all the rest of them will behave exactly the same way so I'm going to uh, pass do something here so as you can see this is how you do it 
you use an array and then if there was more than uh, one method which you wanted to stub then you just add them to the array and it takes a string so the name of the method is passed as a string and then we'll just say get mock and then that completes the action returns you the mock what I'm actually going to do is go over to the example service I'm just going to create another method and I'll give it an obvious name so we know that this is one that we're not going to mock so I'm just going to call it non mocked method and we'll make it interact with our do something method so let's actually have a little bit of space and this will return the return result of the do something method okay so hopefully that's clear for you this do something method, we are going to stub that out in our test, but this one here is actually just going to be allowed to run the way that it is here. Let's go back to our test now. What I'll do is actually perform an assertion. So I'm going to expect foo if I call mock and then the non mocked method because behind the scenes what's going to happen is that's going to call do something and we've said that we want the do something method to return foo. Let's go and check that this is actually working the way that we want it to. Okay, great, one test, one assertion. So hopefully that's clear what we've done there. We've created a mock using the mock build the same as we did before. This time we've disabled to disable the original constructor because we don't want to bother setting all that up. But we've said the only method that we want to fake is actually going to be the do something method. And that means that all of the methods on the class will just work the same as what they have been written to work. So our non mocked method is going to return uh, the return value of the do something method. And so that's returning foo. And so then we can say that implicitly that means that when we call this uh, non mocked method, that's actually going to return foo also. Now, if you're testing ideas out, you can actually stub methods which don't even exist yet on your. Uh, class so let me show you how we can do that and this might be cool if you're doing stuff like a bit of test driven development and you're just um, knocking ideas together and you've not actually created the method yet but um, you're figuring out a ways that if you should create that method you want it to interact with the rest of your code then you can actually do this kind of thing so we'll call this test test add methods and I can actually borrow uh, a bit of our previous mock so there's only one bit that I'm going to change. So just grab the mock from the previous test that we did. And it's this line here. Instead of only methods, we're going to have a line called add methods. Again, this takes an array. And you can use this to um, add method names for methods which don't actually exist yet on your class. So this will not exist on my example service. And I'm going to call it non-existent method, just to be explicit. Okay, so now we have a mock. It has a, a stubbed non-existent method. Let's use this to interact with our code, and we can try out a few different things here. So say mock expects this once, and we're going to say the method non-existent method. As you can see, it's complained that way because if you look in the bottom corner of PHP Storm here, it says the method was not resolved. Perhaps it doesn't exist. In fact, it doesn't exist. And we shall actually provide it with some arguments and we'll say this is instance of, let's use our example dependency. So because this is our last example, I'm just going to throw a load of stuff together here uh, and just um, use as much as what we've learned as possible. And then we'll say will return, and again we'll say foo. And so let's just throw an assertion in here. So this assert same foo, and then we shall call uh, mock non-existent non-existent method with a new instantiation of example dependency. So as you can see. Uh, we're getting some underlining here, we're getting some complaining, but actually when we go and run the test, you'll see that it does in fact pass. So filtering for test add methods, 
and we get one test, two assertions. So two assertions this time because we also put an expectation in there which we hadn't done in the previous couple of tests. And all the complaining from PHP Storm, it's needless really because what we've actually done is we've added a method which does not actually exist yet in our example service to our mock. So pretty cool there. In case you're figuring stuff out, like I said at the beginning, you can actually just throw in methods that don't even exist and expect return values from them. So say for example now I wanted to get a return value from uh, this non-existent method, I'm saying that gives me back foo, I could actually then go ahead and call the other method which we created on this class, uh, passing in that argument, our non-mocked method. So if I was figuring it all out as a whole, I could get the result back from my non-existent method, pass that into this non-mocked method, and then that will carry on and do its thing. So all kinds of cool things that you can do, things that you can add, things where you can say, I just want to test this method, or I just want to stub this method, but I want to let the rest just run as they normally would on that class. You can do all of these things. What we've just looked at there are some fairly simplistic examples in order to just show you some of the things that you can do with mocks and fakes in PHP using PHP units. If you want to have a look at some more sort of real world examples of mocking, then be sure to check out the full testing PHP course and I'll leave a link in the description and also attached to the end of this video.